Okay, so in the previous video, we introduced this idea of gravity. Basically, we were saying that um, we would like to understand why do celestial bodies move the way they do, right? Celestial bodies, remember that's planets, stars, galaxies. They have a, a certain kind of motion. Um, we also, what else did we see? Uh, why, basically, why do they have the orbit that they do? Why does the Earth move around the Sun? Why does the Moon move around the Earth the way it does? And what we saw is that these orbits are approximately circular. And also, uh, so one is circular, those orbits were circular. And also, they moved with a constant speed, meaning like if that's, well, that's the Earth there, then it had this constant speed, okay? And what this told us is that because it's circular with a constant speed, there was this centripetal, there is centripetal acceleration, which is caused by gravity. The same force that is causing this circular motion or orbital motion is the same force that is causing an object near the surface of the Earth to be attracted towards the Earth. Okay, that was the, from the previous video. Now Newton further postulated that the effect of gravity weakens with distance. Right? So the further an object is away from the Earth, the weaker that gravitational effect, because remember it is a, it's not a contact force, but it's a field force. And what he postulated is that gravity spreads out in a similar way that the intensity of light spreads out. So if we have a light source over here, then at a distance r, at a distance r, uh, that light intensity has spread out over a surface area A squared. Okay, so the surface area there of that light intensity is A squared. And then at 2R, 2 times that radius, distance R rather, at 2R it is 2A squared. So then this this whole area becomes 4a squared. And then at 3r, this becomes 9a squared. So, if we say, as I move from this intensity to that intensity, what is the, de the decrease in that intensity? So, if we say, from uh, a squared over 4a squared, what does that give us? It gives us gives us 1 over 4, which is 1 over 2 squared. Right? So as it's moved from uh, from there to 2r, it has decreased its intensity by 1 over 2 squared. Right? If it moves from this intensity to this intensity, then it is a squared over 9a squared. Cancel that out. It's 1 over 9, which is 1 over 3 squared. So you can see the pattern. Moving from this intensity to an intensity just one, uh, the same distance away, right? It will be 1 over 2 squared and 3 times r will be 1 over 3 squared. So we see that this intensity changes by 1 over r squared, right? So this is very similar to the effect of gravity. As you move uh, r away, it decreases that gravitational effect by 1 over r squared. Okay? So this is the inverse of the square of the distance. The inverse of the square of the distance. So 
So for example now, if you've got, uh, so now you've got the Earth, and you've got the Moon, and the radius of the Earth is uh, whatever it is, but the radius of the Moon is 60 times, 60 times, 60 times the radius of the Earth, then that means that the the gravitational effect of of the Earth on the Moon, that gravitational effect, right, is going to be 1 over 60 squared times the gravity gravitational effect of an object close to the surface of the Earth. Okay? So make sure that you understand this idea. Alright? Um, however, he says that there's one catch in this reasoning. It's, there's one assumption here. And this assumption is that all the mass, right, or the the matter of the earth is concentrated into a sphere, a very, very, very small little concentration right at the center of the earth. So, for example, a ball that's interacting with the earth interacts with it based on this 1 over r squared as if all the matter was concentrated into a little ball at the center of the earth. So it says here, this ball interacts with the earth as though all the earth's inertia, Me, is concentrated at the earth's center. But in, actu in actuality, that's not the case. All the matter is spread out in this, uh, this sphere. Okay? Nevertheless, this is what we can conclude, is that a uniform solid sphere, like the Earth, right, exerts a gravitational force outside that sphere, outside that sphere, with a 1 over r squared dependence, as if all the matter in the sphere were concentrated at its center. Okay? So, if we're saying that there's an object there, then we're measuring based on the center of the Earth as if all the matter of the Earth was concentrated right there. Okay. So here's another important statement. Um, the distance between gravitationally interacting spherical objects should always be taken to the distance between their centers. Okay? Two objects interacting. What this means is, we need to consider or assume that all their mass is concentrated at their center. And then, that is where, that is the R. It's between there. Okay? Alright.